Here at the 33rd Annual San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, we have with us now Dr. Leslie Fallowfield, cancer psychologist from the Brighton Sussex Medical School and a leading researcher into the psychosocial effects of treatment for breast cancer. Thanks for stopping by. That's great. Why is it important to study quality of life in cancer patients? We've seen some amazing advances in the treatment of cancer over the last decade, but nothing comes without cost. And I think as we see more patients surviving with their cancer, either cured of the disease or living fairly well for a longer period of time, it's very important to be clear about the iatrogenic harms that some of our treatments might be actually having on patients. You are not always only interested in preserving quantity of life. You want to do that without impairing the quality of life as well. Can you summarize the study you presented here? The study I presented here was looking at the quality of life and the impact that bone pain has on patients with metastatic breast cancer who've got bone disease. The study was comparing zoledronic acid, which is up until now been regarded as probably the standard of care for these sorts of patients, with denosumab. It was a double blind, double dummy trial um, with patients receiving uh, a placebo of either intravenous solidronic acid um, plus um, denosumab or a placebo of denosumab, which is given subcutaneously, and solidronic acid every four weeks. Was the trial design unique? The trial wasn't especially unique because it was doing what one would have to do to have a double-blind study, which is the purest sort of scientific test. But one aspect of the trial that I think is very important is that denosumab is given subcutaneously, whereas zoledronic acid is given intravenously. And because in the trial people had to have a placebo, those patients who were receiving denosumab didn't have the potential advantages that they would experience if it was being given in a normal clinical setting. In other words, they had to come along to the hospital, have an IV infusion, um, with all that that entails. And one of the great advantages of denosumab is precisely because patients do not have to have intravenous um, therapy. They can have the, it, the drugs subcutaneously. What were the outcomes? The outcomes of the trial were really exciting. Um, first of all, clinically, um, it was very apparent that denosumab was superior to zoledronic acid in terms of delaying and preventing skeletal-related events, which are horrible things for patients with metastatic disease to get, uh, fractures, um, all sorts of uh, spinal compression, all sorts of other very unpleasant, nasty things that are life-threatening in themselves. So first of all, the study showed quite clearly that denosumab was superior to zoledronic acid. It also showed that um, pain was reduced in um, the denosumab treated group. And pain is a major factor affecting quality of life in these patients with this form of disease. And overall quality of life was also superior for a higher proportion of the denosumab treated patients compared to those having zoledronic acid. Let me ask you about direction. Where are we now in the study of quality of life in cancer patients, and where do we need to go from here? Okay, well, I've been working in quality of life for a, well over a quarter of a century, and uh, certainly when I first came to meetings like this, um, I was lucky if I got a poster in the far corner of the room at the end of the conference. What we've seen over the last few years is people paying more than lip service to quality of life issues. Patients demand that people do take account of the impact that disease and treatment is having on their lives. And they want doctors to be aware of those things and to always have an eye open for the effect that different treatments that might improve survival by a few months, it, it might actually 
excite the clinical scientist, but it doesn't always lead to obvious benefits for the unfortunate patient. So what we've actually seen is over the years an increasing recognition that patients want more than just the focus on increasing the length of life. They want the length of that to also be good quality. Currently, we have now the FDA, for example, um, approving some of the standardized measures and tests that we use for evaluating quality of life, provided that we use these well-validated, properly designed measurement tools. And if we see improvements in quality of life, um, the FDA will even allow that in the labeling of a drug. So I think, by and large, what I'm looking at to the future is that everybody recognises that we should never just triumph one clinical improvement um, in a drug. We have to actually match that with improvements in quality. If you've got patients particularly who have metastatic disease, they're condemned to die of their disease and palliation therefore is the primary goal and we've got to get much smarter at helping our doctors know how to measure these things properly. And if you haven't measured all the side effects and the impact of treatment, you don't know how to develop the ameliorative supportive interventions that need to go alongside the treatments that actually produce clinical benefit. Dr. Fallowfield, very well said. Thank you for being such an advocate for the patient. It's a pleasure. Thank you.